alaikum, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Scope here on British Muslim TV, broadcast to you live not only online on Facebook and Twitter, but obviously also wherever BMTV is being broadcast on satellite as well. Please continue to, of course, throughout this episode, send in your comments and opinions as we discuss today uh, Islamophobia in France. Now, today is the International Day to Combat Islamophobia. That's a day that's been appointed by the United Nations. We're going to be discussing um, CAGE, which is an NGO based in the UK, and a report that it has released into French Islamophobia, specifically speaking more about its treatment or the French state's treatment of Muslims as fitting the description of persecution under international law. Now, Cage says that France persecutes Muslims by dissolving Muslim organizations by decree, heavy-handed policing, and criminalization of Islam, in part, including, of course, other measures as well. Uh, this is at the same time that France is currently the EU, pre holds the EU rotating presidency until June of 2022. Why haven't other EU member states really spoken out against France's such measures? And of course, we can talk about many such measures, which I'm sure we will throughout this show as well. And the kind of example this sets not only for Europe, but also for the rest of the world who is watching in. And we can, of course, point to the likes of India, who are also in many ways increasingly Islamophobic. Let's discuss those issues a bit further. We're now joined by Ryan Fresky, who is a qualified French legal jurist and France-based researcher for CAGE. He was, he was very much involved in forming this report that came out through CAGE. We're also joined by Dr. Hamza Esnidi, who is an anthropologist, postdoctoral researcher at KU Leuven. And we, of course, appreciate both Hamza and Rayan for taking their time out and for joining us here in the scope today. Um, Rayan, let me start with you, if I may. Cage um, came up with this, this very detailed report. Was anything really new in it? Because I mean, if we're talking about the disillusion of all of those organizations, uh, even myself as a journalist, over these four years, I've even had a very hard time, in fact, finding French Muslim voices to represent specific organizations, because as Cage has mentioned in this report, they are increasingly shut down. Uh, uh, yeah, for sure. The, uh, the main idea of the report was to uh, basically connect the dots, basically uh, uh, make sure to understand that each and every closure, each and every solution uh, was actually connected to a wider plan. And that plan uh, uh, actually is, is a, uh, a state-sponsored, so an official policy, which is entitled the Systematic Obstruction Policy. And that's the main uh, uh, element that we unveiled in that report. So what's, what's the, uh, let's say, the description of that policy? Well, it was started in uh, February 2018 under Emmanuel Macron's presidency. And at first, it started in complete secrecy. And uh, uh, the main point of the policy is to basically, uh, according to them, uh, protect uh, Republican values uh, protect laicity from the assaults of Islamism uh, uh, and Islamist separatism. This is their language, obviously, that's not mine. Uh, now, what is, according to them, Islamism, Islamist separatism? When, when you, or even radicalization, when you look at their description, description that is given by the state, well, you're going to realize that uh, uh, Islamism, Islamist separatism only uh, describe actually uh, uh, Islamic, orthodox Islamic practices and orthodox Islamic uh, beliefs, like, I don't know, wearing a, be wearing a beard, for example, or uh, a, a prayer, or uh, Ramadan as well, are all signals or uh, uh, indicators, according to them, of radicalization, separatism, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, in more, more concretely, such a policy, uh, uh, which started four years ago, led to the uh, monitoring and the uh, investigation of uh, thousands of Muslim-led organizations or institutions in France. When I say thousands, I actually have the specific number, and we're talking about 24,807 
uh, uh, investigations that were led by the state in four years. We're also talking about the closures or the dissolutions of more than 718 organizations, obviously Muslim organizations. When I say organizations, I want to be more specific. Yeah. We're not just talking about... Ryan, if, if, I, if I may come in, because I just wanted to bring in Hamza to the conversation too, if you allow me. Hamza, I wanted to get your point of view from your vantage point as well, because this doesn't just affect France, right? I mean, this also affects the rest of Europe, who is very much looking at this as an example, isn't it, as well, as almost an example to follow. Am I right to say that? Yes, I think this could be said, indeed, the, not only in Europe, but maybe even more globally. Of course, we know that uh, the uh, French state is uh, very ideological <laughs> in that matter. Um, we often hear that uh, the uh, uh, surge of Islamophobia is linked, for instance, to elections and so on. And I'm very much against this thesis because I think that uh, there is something very ideological at stake. And uh, indeed, you're right. Uh, it's, it's, it gives example to many other countries. We can see, for, for instance, Austria. Austria has, uh, as you know, promoted very harsh uh, uh, legislation ag against so-called uh, Muslim Brotherhood and uh, with very dramatic effects, as you know, for instance, the case of uh, Dr. Farid Hafiz, who was expelled from the University of Vienna and uh, uh, his home was invaded. And indeed, there is a very strong connection between, between the French government and the Austrian uh, one in this particular aspect. Even further away from Austria, we can also think of connections between, uh, very ideological connections between France, for instance, and Russia, uh, which is, as you know, in this particular moment, uh, invading Ukraine, not, of course, only for, for that, but also because they are uh, uh, saying that uh, uh, the Ukrainian government is helping, uh, uh, quote unquote, Islamic uh, terrorism from Crimea, from Tatar, Tatar Crimea. So in this matter, of course, there's a very ideological component and French sometimes find itself, uh, uh, French governments find itself aligned with this thesis. Uh, as you know, France, for instance, helps many anti-Muslim Brotherhood governments in the Islamic world, uh, uh, such as uh, Egypt, such as uh, uh, the Emir uh, Arabic uh, Emirates, uh, the Union of uh, Arabic Emirates and so on. So, of course, you're right. Uh, uh, France plays a very key uh, role in uh, expanding and, and uh, theorizing Islamophobia across the globe, not only in Europe. But uh, regarding the specific matter of what ha what's happening uh, uh, inside of France, I think that you are very right, as uh, uh, Ryan was saying, to point that uh, uh, these policies are ma massive and also they are very much complex because you have uh, um, yeah, France is targeting individuals. We have something like 57,000 individuals that were targeted by reporting uh, uh, services since uh, uh, 2014. So uh, these are these were uh, uh, reported to intel intelligence. Some of them lost their jobs. Some of them lost their homes. At some point, uh, some of them were uh, made enabled, uh, uh, were not being allowed anymore to, to travel and so on. Uh, but also, as my colleague was saying, uh, there is this very harsh policy against any kind, really, any kind of Muslim organizations uh, and very different Muslim organizations from, organizations from one another. Of course, there's the very famous case of the CCIF, the Collective Against yeah. Islamophobia in France, which was uh, uh, mainly working through the uh, sphere of justice. Uh, uh, um, but also you have other cases, like uh, there, uh, a year ago, there was the closing of uh, this very liberal and very, uh, let's say, pro-business Muslim school, uh, MHAs, which was actually very proud of saying, for instance, that they were uh, had, they, they had a deal with the French army, so they were very republicanist, very patriotic and so on, but still, they were still closed uh, by the French government. So uh, yes, okay. so, maybe- so very... If I may come in, Hamza, I wanted to bring Ryan back in. Ryan, you know, the French Muslim population is not a new population. It's not a, it's not a new minority population in France. I mean, this is, a, this is a population that has been there for generations in many cases. Um, what does it mean now that the French state is going after them? Why is this, do you think, happening now? I think there are uh, 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 several layers that can explain the reason why the French government became so radical when addressing Muslims. Uh, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is the fact that uh, uh, obviously, the uh, Muslim community, especially in the last 30 years, uh, started to become more and more practicing, that actually uh, it uh, 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 deepened its understanding of the deal, its understanding of Islam, and started to uh, basically organize more and more and showcase more and more its 
uh, uh, its Islamic beliefs and its Islamic practices. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Uh, the second element is obviously the fact that we are living uh, under the current war on terror. The war on terror is a global phenomenon, as you know, it's a global conflict that has been going on since uh, basically two decades. And uh, France is obviously very much involved in it and is very much influenced by the policies and the language that was uh, uh, created and established by the war on terror. So uh, uh, these are the first two elements that can explain the reason why uh, France became uh, basically uh, an officially Islamophobic state. Obviously, we can talk about as well the uh, cycle of violence, the fact that uh, 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 Islamophobic policies that still existed uh, a few decades ago uh, fostered some kind of resentment in the uh, community and actually uh, facilitated some kind of, uh, of violence. Obviously, uh, we all recall the uh, 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 the attacks that took place in 2015 and 2016 as well. But I do believe that this is also an element that, uh, let's say, uh, 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 triggered a response from the state that became uh, actually a constitution. All right, so, so Hamza, let me bring you back in because we're just quickly going into a break very soon, but I wanted to get your opinion on that before we go into the break about why now, in your opinion, is this happening? Yeah, I can maybe start with France because I think that there is very something something very specific here at play. Um, so Ryan was talking, was talking about uh, uh, Islamism and how this uh, definition of Islamism is very pervasive and allows the French government to basically uh, tackle each kind of uh, Islamic. Uh, uh, gesture or organization or individual in, uh, in its territory. I think we have to come back a bit a little to this very definition of Islamism in the 80s, which was the idea that uh, Islamists were the people who wanted to seize power. So obviously in France, there is no Muslim people wanting to seize power. Uh, obviously, this not, does not, this cannot be said in France. So they had to... So they had to use a different strategy. They decided to say that each uh, woman uh, wearing the 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 the, 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 the hijab, each man uh, having a beard, were part of a vast inspiration. Uh, so okay. the idea here, I think, was that saying that each and every kind of subjectivity or organization were part of part of the same conspiration. Okay. I'm, sorry, I'm just, just going to cut you off because we're going very quickly into the break. But I'm just going to. Um, Ask viewers to stay with us, of course. We're going to continue the discussion right after this break with Hamza and Rayan. Stay with us for a Welcome back, everyone. We're continuing to discuss Islamophobia in France on this episode of The Scope with Rayan and Hamza, who are both joining us respectively. And Rayan, of course, is a researcher with CAGE, and Hamza is an anthropologist and postdoctoral researcher at KU Leuven. Um, Hamza, let me start with you in this segment and ask you about the politics of all of this, right? I've already mentioned the EU presidency and the fact that France currently holds the EU presidency till June 2022, but then there's obviously also the huge reality of domestic French politics um, and how Macron has had to move ever more right wing. Um, is there any chance of the situation becoming any better for French citizens, French Muslim citizens, that is? Uh, I mean, we can hope for this, but uh, when you have, uh, so for instance, in November, Eric Zemmour, which, as you might know, is one of the uh, main contenders for the French electoral presidency and also is a very right wing. Uh, so he was uh, polled at uh, something like 43 percent at the second uh, second uh, tour of the uh, president, uh, president election. And um, <laughs> uh, Eric Zemmour basically is asking for what he calls remigration, which means uh, basically expelling all Muslims from uh, from France. So, of course, this is just a poll, and obviously it does not mean that 43% uh, um, of French people are in favor of this, but I think we really have to see that Islamophobia in France is not, not just from, uh, let's say, a political, political elite or something, but it's really a social fact, meaning that uh, there is something happening right now in the French society that uh, is producing uh, Islamophobia to such a, a wide extent and such a violent, violent extent. Uh, um, as you know, many, many organizations were closed, many individuals were targeted, were uh, reported, uh, where some of them lost their jobs, their, 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 their homes, and so on. But we have not seen any kind of uh, 
uh, let's say, a uh, public uh, uh, defense of French Muslims or very few, very, very, uh, very, very little of it. So uh, yeah. I'm not sure that's, that's, we have that's a very good point, Hamza, because in fact, Ryan, that's a good question to put to you. What are your thoughts about people around you and in, in France itself and, and what they genuinely think of Muslims? I mean, uh, the, a lot of people within the French establishment would likely, you know, point at incidents like Charlie Hebdo and other such incidents and say that is why the French do not trust Muslims. Is that um, the truth in your experience as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I entirely agree with uh, what uh, uh, Dr. Smidi uh, pointed out. And uh, yes, of course, that's uh, that's my personal experience. And just to give you a a quick element uh, regarding, for example, the systematic obstruction, the systematic obstruction policy, the official Islamophobic policy that has been created in 2018. What act, what's absolutely shocking in my eyes is that in the last four years, you can only find maybe two or three articles in uh, main media outlets that actually dealt with the policy. And those articles are extremely biased and full of uh, factual mistakes. So we're talking about such a massive persecution, a persecution that is directly led by the state. And no one is talking about that. Absolutely no one. And this is something that is absolutely uh, uh, telling. It is quite telling and uh, 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 proves the reality of, uh, as uh, Dr. Ismaili said, a social, a, a almost cultural uh, Islamophobic resentment. Uh, to be uh, to, to be clear, you either dislike Muslims or and you hate them actively, or if you don't, well, at the very least, you're not going to defend them. So that's the. Uh, the overall atmosphere that we are living under right now. And it's uh, it's definitely not a good look because we need to bear in mind that when Macron was elected, he was supposed to be that liberal guy, that guy who is a moderate, who's going to defend the rights of minorities. And that's under Macron that such a persecution was established. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, the future is, uh, especially for Muslims in France, is, is quite uncertain and precarious. Hamza, you know, another logical question that comes up, and I imagine many people are thinking this, and I certainly am thinking this uh, as somebody who is not French and I do not know the reality on the ground in France, but one would wonder why aren't Muslims uniting more both in France and in Europe against what is happening? Why is there a stronger stance? So why isn't there, you know, if there is such a voting bloc that is strong enough, that it's a strong minority, it's the largest minority of Muslims, in fact, in Europe, why isn't this minority stronger? Yeah, I think it's a very good question. I think there are some factors that are conjectural. First of foremost, when you have a, such a powerful state that is doing everything to uh, threaten you, to threaten your very existence in your country, to threaten the existence of your family and so on, I think it's a very logical reaction to, yeah, to be scared, I think. <laughs> so I think there is that. Of course, I think there are many individuals and organizations that would like to say something but are not uh, uh, able to do so because they are fearing for their own uh, existence, for their own, uh, they might be, as you, for instance, saw earlier, there was uh, this mosque in Cannes who was uh, now reopened but was originally closed because uh, they just uh, uh, said something in support of the CCIF. So as you can see, there is this very strong policy of, uh, um, and explicit policy of uh, of scaring Muslims. Uh, re recently there, there was this, uh, interview of Gerard Lamanon, which is the interior minister in, uh, in Le Figaro, so a uh, uh, very uh, uh, widespread uh, uh, journal, and saying that they were very proud to quote-unquote terrorize the ones who were usually terrorizing friends. So they, he was referring to the people who are now leaving friends. Of course, there are several of them that were very known, um, activists, uh, researchers also, and so on. But I think more generally, someone should look at the statistics of how many French Muslims are currently leaving France. And Damana is saying that they are quite proud of that. So I think that indeed, there's, this is a very conjectural reason. But maybe we can also, uh, let's say, look at something uh, even more more structural. I think that uh, um, the very paradox of all of this is that, uh, um, from my understanding, the Islamophobic discourse that we now have in France is very conspirationist, it's, uh, looking at Muslims everywhere in universities, in schools, in hospitals, in the justice dep departments, and so on. And I think it's a sign of something that's very unbelievable for the French state, which is that actually, as you put 
earlier, the French Muslim immigration is quite old now and the, the integration has worked actually. And I think so. I think that uh, people are truly a part of the society. And this is, I think, what also makes it a bit harder to organize is that, that uh, I don't think that they thought of uh, uh, themselves uh, before that as something that is different from the French society. Of course, there is there always was racism and so on. But I think that many people somehow believed this uh, um, Republican <laughs> Republican promise or something like this. I think that many people through schools, through social ascension, to universities and so on, truly believe that at some point they will become uh, French people like any other else, although Muslims, although not, uh, 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 let's say, separating from their faith and their practices and so on. So I think this this paradox for the French state, they are truly enable, uh, not able to understand that these people are truly French, but they are still Muslims. And I think it's also what makes very harder for Muslim people to organize in France because they are not a community in the sense that uh, they are living apart. They are all in all the uh, parts of the French society. Indeed. Rayan, do you think that there is a role for the international community to play in this? And I'm speaking more about the Muslim world. So, for example, we have had the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, which has, which has released many statements about you know, Islamophobia within France. Is there a role for the international community or do you, in fact, think that that might hurt French Muslims more than help them? No, no, I actually believe that the international community has a very strong role to play in here because, uh, uh, as we discussed uh, uh, earlier, it's very difficult for Muslims to actually oppose the state right now. I mean, it's, uh, there's a lot at stake. I mean, if you do so, uh, you can basically lose your organization, you can lose your mosque. So it's very difficult to uh, voice your dissent as a French Muslim right now. Uh, uh, the international community, and especially the Muslim world, always has a role to play, uh, first and foremost because it's our principle. As Muslims, we are one large ummah, so we are supposed to uh, uh, support each other, obviously, and say the truth and oppose oppression each and everywhere there is. That's the first point. The second element, which is more, uh, let's say, tactical and strategical, is the fact that France has a very specific uh, uh, international position. And right now, they're actually, try they're actually witnessing a phenomenon that is, uh, uh, in, that is called a uh, strategical downgrade. They're basically witnessing their own uh, 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 strategical downgrade in the uh, international sphere. And in order to protect and to avoid such a strat strategical downgrade, they're trying to uh, basically showcase a reputation of uh, you know, good governance of a state that respects minorities, that is open-minded, and so on and so forth. Now, the fact that, uh, as we know, they are actually persecuting Muslims, uh, uh, the international community must absolutely, and the Islamic world must entirely uh, uh, put some pressure, in a way or another, against uh, uh, against France in order to make sure that not only do they stop their persecution here, but and that's the, uh, uh, the second element that is at stake, to make sure that French Islamophobic policies do not spread to the rest of Europe. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's a very important point. And, uh, and yeah, I entirely agree. I do believe that the Muslim community at large uh, needs to act, obviously. It's our principle. And uh, uh, the only reason why it didn't uh, may be because they actually didn't know uh, what France was actually doing against uh, its Muslim minority. So the main idea of the report is also to make sure that we can share as much information as possible with the rest of the world. Yeah. Um, Hamza, you know, there, there are reports about some people, and I know that this is probably exaggerated in some regards, but there, there are some reports about some French Muslims leaving the country or immigrating to other countries such as Turkey. I've read a few reports about that over the past month or so. Um, I don't want to I don't want to exaggerate or concentrate and say that all French Muslims are leaving, but I'm I mean, do you think that that is um, unfortunately what may start happening more and more? Yeah, I do think so. I, I do think that I'm, I, I'm, I'm like you. I think I do not want to sound apocalyptical, but uh, I do think that there will be, especially within people uh, that did go to the universities and did manage to, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 
favorized, favorized uh, positions. I do think that there are many people who are going to go to Turkey, maybe even to the UK, maybe to the United States, to Canada, to uh, Dubai, to these countries where they think that they can be what they are without uh, compromising uh, uh, with their faith and so on. So I think that there, yes, I think that this is very much a social fact. Unfortunately, we do not have statistics for the moment, but I think that this will be more, unfortunately, more and more of a wide social fact. Very well. We'll leave it there at that with Hamza and Rayan, but we really appreciate both of you taking your time out of your no doubt busy schedules to, to share your insight with us. Rayan, as I said, works with CAGE and Hamza is a postdoctoral researcher at KU Leuven. Um, we were discussing there, of course, CAGE's report into Islamophobia in France. We'll be back next week, certainly, at this very time, discussing other important international issues here on the school here on BMTV. Thanks so much for watching.